Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, when you don't think it can get any crazier, we got to talk about FSU and Clemson possibly going to the Big 12. And there's all kinds of rumors out there. This is off the chain. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah, I feel like I've been taking crazy pills. This doesn't make any sense, but there's a bunch of talk about it. And even Ross Dellinger spoke about this, and it beats me. But there is a possibility. I don't think it makes sense, but there is a possibility. All right, this is all over the internet. There's story after story. Report that Florida State and Clemson are believed to have had preliminary discussions with the Big 12 Conference. Talks about another path for the Seminoles in the conference realignment world. And, of course, it discusses how they're all in a huge battle. You know that uh, Florida State is suing the ACC. Clemson is also suing the ACC. They are countersuing. There's lawsuits everywhere in multiple states. Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, which is where the ACC is uh, headquartered. And when they found out that FSU was going to sue them, the ACC ran to the courthouse and filed their lawsuit to jump in front of them, so theirs would possibly have precedent to the lawsuit, which I don't know how much uh, favor that's going to have. Now, of course, they'd rather go to either the Big Ten or the SEC. That would make perfect sense. That's where the money is. It says, while speaking on a show with Big 12 reporter John Kurtz, Yahoo Sports Ross Dellinger revealed that he thinks the conference has had preliminary discussions with FSU and Clemson, and Dellinger talked about how there's like three options the first option is obvious. They either want to go to the SEC or the Big Ten. And we talked about this the other day. It really, in my opinion, geographically doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them to go to the Big Ten. And I showed you this map right here. Now, FSU is right here down here in Tallahassee. They'd have to fly everywhere they play. Whenever they're on the road, they're going to have to fly. They're not going to drive across four or five states or 12 states. They're going to have to use a plane every single time. That's going to cost a ton of money. Now, the Big Ten does pay a little bit more, and I've shown you this. As you can see, the Big Ten uh, has a little bit better uh, TV deal, so there's about 4 or $5 million more going to the Big Ten. There are a few caveats to that, but there is a little bit more money through Fox Sports as opposed to ESPN. You can see down here, Big 12 is well behind both the SEC and the Big Ten, and so is the ACC. And also the college football money distribution for the playoff. The SEC actually gets a little bit more. Even though it's the same amount of money, it's just there are less SEC teams. And the ACC and Big 12 are, again, about half. So I can tell you, as a former player myself, I played over at UT. Now, granted, it was back in the 80s on the golf team. But I wouldn't want to be in a plane constantly going back and forth. And that could be used against you in recruiting. You know, when you're talking to the parents of these kids, especially the mother, and say, do you really want your child in the air all the time, flying back and forth from California or up to the Northeast? That could really hurt you in recruiting, and it's going to cost a lot of money. That's why I think it's tougher for the Big Ten. Now, it can be worked out. It can be done. I'm not saying it can't. I just don't think geographically that makes a whole lot of sense to me, especially when you look at where the SEC is located. Yeah, right here. And, of course, uh, you've got FSU right here, and you've got Clemson right here. So, I mean, really, think about that. Every one of those are within driving distance for the most part. You might fly to one or two, but for the most part, you can drive, especially if you're playing uh, Florida or any of the teams down there like Mississippi State, Auburn, Alabama, Georgia, et cetera. It's just not that far away, and that makes a big difference. Now, the second option that Ross Dellinger spoke of, and we kind of all know this, there is the possibility that they stay in the ACC they try to get it reformed down to like 10 or 12 teams instead of eight, which means you're going to have to throw teams out. You're going to have to go over there and start telling some of these teams in the ACC in the bottom tier, you're out because Clemson and uh, FSU wants more money, which would make them super popular, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I think it's going to be tough for them to stay in the ACC. There is a lot of love lost over that. There's been a lot of political blood spilt over this, especially with Commissioner Phillips and all the uh, – players involved, so to speak. I think it might be a whole lot like this around the dinner table. Oh, you don't it. talk Do to me like me, that. Dad? People don't are you... scared of me. Why would anyone be scared of you? I hate you, you big fat turd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think the ACC and FSU and Clemson, especially FSU and ACC. 
And I'll just go ahead and tell you, the biggest thing that really got this rolling, besides the money, which was the long-term problem, and it was going to happen eventually, but when they got totally screwed out of that college football playoff, that's when it was on. From that point forward, it was on. Okay. All right. We got served. So now, I guess, it's on. And they would have been in the playoff had Commissioner Phillips and his alliance group of geniuses had not decided to hold off the 12-team playoff by one year because he didn't feel it was the right time to do it. And we all know when you base decisions on feelings, they're always correct. So anyway, staying in the ACC is probably the second best option if they're not going to go to the Big Ten or the SEC. Then there's the third option, going to the Big 12. And you're in the same boat. I don't understand how this is even an option. You've still got the exact same problem. This is what the Big 12 pays out, including everything, and so does the ACC. There's no difference. You're going to still be about $30 million behind every year from Ohio State and Tennessee, even Vanderbilt. You're $30 million behind Vanderbilt if you stay in the ACC or you go to the Big 12, unless you can kick out a bunch of teams out of the ACC so you can get more money or the Big 12 pays you more than all the other teams in the Big 12, which would be super popular with those teams. And here's a map of the Big 12. Now, granted, it's not quite, well, it is almost as far as playing the Big 10 because you still got to pretty much fly everywhere you go. I mean, you're down here and we're over here. It's a heck of a ride. You want to drive through four or five states to get to the closest ones, except for UCF, that'd be your one break. None of this makes sense. You need to get into the SEC somehow, some way, or there is another option, and it's the Notre Dame option. Go independent. If you can get out of the ACC, fight them, and somehow get out, there is the possibility of just going independent, do your own TV rights deal with one of the big cable channels, You know, maybe even an ESPN or Fox Sports. Who knows? Uh, there's talk of, um, of other channels that would be glad to have you. Notre Dame has their own, I believe it's with NBC, I could be wrong about that. Somebody, I'm sure, will correct me because if you make a mistake on YouTube, oh, jeez. Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Perfect. I guess I forgot that you never, ever make a mistake. Yeah, Mr. Perfect is going to get you. Anyway, that is an option as well. That's probably the better option than Big 12 or staying in, staying in the ACC is not going to be easy. It's just not. It's like going to divorce court. And the uh, judge says, y'all have got to stay together. <laughs> it's just not going to be pretty. And of course, we know there's been a lot of talk that something was going to give at SEC days, which is next week, that there might be an announcement, something along those lines. We will see. That's been talked about a bunch. And of course, you had um, Josh Pate, who brought that out what, three or four days ago and said that he'd heard from people that weren't involved in sports, actually people in the legal field that don't have a, a dog in this hunt, that pretty much said something's going to happen in July. You can just count on it. So there's that as well, which I think makes more sense than anything else. But this Big 12 talk that's going on, I just, I'm not, I can understand them at least talking to them because the Big 12, what they're trying to do is become a big, big, big conference and try to compete with the SEC and the Big 10, which is not going to be easy to do. Again, when you look at these teams, I mean, they're not bad, but we're talking Cincinnati, Iowa State, you know, Kansas, Colorado, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Houston, UCF. It's just not the cream of the crop as far as football goes. Those are great basketball schools, by the way. I mean, they're terrific in basketball. But football, they're, they're in third. They're in obvious third. I actually think they're probably a little bit ahead of the ACC. It's close. Calm down, ACC people. But other than that, you know, they're in either third or tied for third with the ACC. So I just... All you're doing is going from the frying pan to the fire. That's all you're doing if you go to the Big 12. I just can't see it. Anyway, I did want to cover this today because it's been all over the internet. That's all anybody's talking about is this Big 12 thing. So anyway, I just I can't see it. I really don't. Oh, and for my Tennessee fans, uh, Chan Davian Bradley, who was a big-time edge player out of the state of Missouri, actually was a great get for uh, Tennessee. He really hadn't kind of worked out over there on the defensive line, and there was talk of moving him to tight end because we were kind of shorthanded on that side for a little while. And I knew when I heard that, I was like, oh, that's not a good sign. And Tennessee's defensive line is deep. It's super talented, being led by James Pierce, the number one edge rusher in the country. 
all the way down through. That's our strength of our team is our defensive line and quarterback. And it just, he couldn't break through. So he's going to Hutchinson uh, Community College, which is a big time uh, JUCO college where really a lot of guys kind of um, retool their uh, skills and eventually go back to another big school, which will probably be what happens with Chan Davian Bradley, super talented guy, very high upside, but just wasn't getting it done on the defensive line and didn't break in. So I guess he probably realized, hey, man, I, I need to play. So he goes there, can kind of retool himself, probably be a starter immediately, and get some playing time and become better and more prepared, more experienced, and then he can go to another school. Who knows? He might even come back to UT. You never know in this day and age. If you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's remember to continue to cover all these big sports stories. If you've not subscribed, boom, 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 hit that little button. I'd appreciate it. It will not cost you a dime, and it helps me out. And right over here is the most recent video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.